Welcome back, Achievers, to Yo! Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of July 15th. Slightly later than usual. There was a couple hiccups, but as you can see, the person with me today came through. So don't worry about that. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting across me digitally as, at least until recently, Mr. Mario Not Bros. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Thanks and for having me. A quick background of Mr. Mario Not Bros here that I have never actually talked about on air. If, and I've talked about this before. If the inspiration of this podcast is OG Podcast Beyond from when I was growing up, listening to Podcast Beyond in the car with my father on the way to school, you are as Good if times. like some sort of catalyst to actually make me start podcasting. Because you've been, you've been in the background really since I've been cognizant of the internet. Like ever since I've been using Twitter and Reddit, you've always just been there making videos, really hustling. And that's one of the reasons I'm why going... I wanted to get you on today. You are, needless to say, an inspiration. It's you, it's Emmett, it's people like you guys that I was like one day like, I got to get in this. And no, hey, like, it, it is a hustle, but I appreciate it. That means a lot, man. No. You're doing great. You're doing it. That's, that's all it takes, right? You're, I, you're I'll never forget. I think, this was, I think this was Greg Miller probably five years ago now or something. He said, uh, just start because you're going to suck. So just start. Yeah. No one's going to listen. It's all going to suck. And he was right. My God, like every episode, you get a little bit better. I yeah, remember the first few works, episodes, you just stumbling over yourself. I remember uh, one of my friends who was like, oh, I'll, 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 I'll listen. I'll, I'll uh, start with the old ones. I was like, don't, don't do that. Don't. Yeah, I was like, no, actually, <laughs> no, 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 start, no, no, no. With, start with the just, new ones. Just, and after a certain point, now. just don't. Just listen now. Don't worry just about listen it. Now. Don't, go, don't go back to the beginning. No, 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 no. <laughs> Please, for the love of God. Absolutely. Like, uh, yeah. But, but that, don't worry. This is not a podcast podcast. This is, of course... A gaming podcast and easy trivia's game box come to you every single friday sometime no, not this time but that's because remember alex my regular co-host is on paternity leave remember go give him a shout out on twitter congratulate him he's doing great right now and he's going to be joining that new baby but right now the ever revolving chair like the old podcast beyond days is of course mario today last week was emmett mario is here so thank you so much for joining us and i start the show with a single question every single week but before we do that let's get into rapid fire Number one, Netflix is partnering with Microsoft for a new ad-supported tier. Uh, well, there wasn't much on this. Of course, Netflix, popular TV, now game streaming platform, has announced that Microsoft will be leading. This is a, a direct quote, quote, global advertising technology and sales partner, end quote, whatever that means. This will be an ad-supported tier on Netflix that will launch sometime later this year. Wasn't too much about this. This is a rapid fire. I don't have too much to say about this. Anything uh, that you want to bring on this, Mario? The only thing I would say is that, you know, I, I think right before like Stranger Things 4 came out, Netflix was not having a great time PR wise. Definitely like, not. They were raising prices. They're trying to come down on password sharing. There was yep. all that stuff. And, you know, I, I think this is them kind of reacting to that a little bit, going for a cheaper, you know, more tentatively, I guess I, you would hope, cheaper yep. alternative of a Netflix subscription, which, you know, it, it, it Ads have become part of the norm in the streaming world. Mm. It used to be no ads, but now nowadays, you know, Hulu has ads if you if you don't want to pay for the ultra premium. Yeah. Paramount Plus would have ads. A, a lot of the services have ads nowadays. It's it's kind of par for the course, and especially if it's cheaper, there's there's no going wrong with that. Yeah, I, I have I have no problems. I I I think I've I think me and my dad has had Netflix. I think since before it was Netflix, like we were getting DVDs in the mail and stuff. So. Oh, I don't yeah. even remember oh, when good, we signed good up. Good times, but yeah, that was yeah. All, that was always fun. It was like blockbuster coming to your house. I always remember that. But um, but yeah, I, I don't really, I don't really care about this. We will actually get into some crazy speculation that people are doing later in the show, uh, from a result of this. But before we do that, let's finish off rapid fire with uh, today marks the uh, finalization of the purchase of Bungie by PlayStation that is officially closed today. They announced it. Um, it happened. You know, probably one of the best deals uh, that a studio can ask for is the bungee deal 3.6 billion i think it was for nothing changing almost like uh at least on paper most of the time so that is uh congratulations to everyone there it's bungee's great team over there so shout out to you guys because that is uh a sizable amount of money and i still will never i say it everyone every week because i just love the quote i'll never forget ceo pete parsons on the announcement going this is the start of a multimedia empire. <laughs> I still can't believe you love put it. that. You gotta love that. I'm like, wow, you that is a way to end <laughs> an announcement. The start of a multimedia empire. Speaking of multimedia empires, Nintendo announced this morning that it will be acquiring 
uh, Dyna Dynamo Pictures. This is actually yesterday morning. Sorry, I forgot to change that. Dynamo Pictures is some of the people behind some Pikmin shorts, among some other things. I think they helped with Metroid Other M. Uh, apparently, Nintendo is very pleased with the company. They bought a hundred percent of the shares. Now they've fully acquired them. They're also going to rename them Nintendo Pictures. This will be leading in Nintendo's visual content from now. The deal is expected to close October third, twenty twenty-two. I don't really too have much to say though. This I'm not a big Nintendo guy. Threw it in rapid fire because it's pertinent for sure. Uh, Mario, I actually don't know. Uh, does it, do you first off care about this? And are you a big Nintendo guy? You know, I I I love Nintendo. I have my Switch. I use my Switch often. Um, this. You know, this is cool. I don't think, obviously, in the in the realm of, of acquisitions right now, this is de definitely not, you know, one of the top five biggest, like, right. acquisitions that have happened in the last few years. But, um, you know, like, good for them. They're going to they're gonna ha have some picture, some help with the, you know, development and pictures and whatever. And, you know, good for you, Nintendo. Nintendo yeah. kind of, they're kind of off to the side doing their own thing, and that's fine by me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we keep trying to wrangle Nintendo and guess what they're going to do, and, and it's just, you, you can't anymore. Not how it works. Yeah, you can't. Not how it works. You can't. You can't. <laughs> Na Nacon, the publisher behind many games like Vampire the Masquerade, Swan Song, and the upcoming Greedfall 2, announced a open world survival game based in the Ter Terminator universe. Now, not much is shown, but there was a short cinematic with T-800 training someone in the warehouse. Uh, I just love Terminator. This looked cool. Uh, it looks awesome. I tentatively open world survival. I'm like, all right, I got to see what that is. Um, but it looks cool. I have nothing else to say. It does look cool. I mean, it's 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 interesting that a lot of like old horror franchises are getting like sort of big revivals in the video game market. Like we saw that, that with true. Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th happened. Now we have the Evil Dead game. Uh, there was um, obviously the, uh, the Alien Isolation yeah. and all that. And I think there's a new Alien game announced or something. So, yeah, the top you know, down kind of yeah, yeah isometric that, that one, it was showed at, at the summer game fest or whatever yeah. it was but you know cool i mean a, a terminator game could be awesome uh, the fact that it's open world surprised me because originally i just saw the trailer and i i thought it was going to be some sort of online thing i i was thinking it was going like to be through the route of, of thing yeah because mm. terminator kind of fits the the yeah. friday the 13th dead by daylight formula but open world survival game i mean fuck if it if it's done well it could be really cool so yeah yeah i was also expecting this online type scenario so i was like i immediately like turned my brain off but then i started reading about it and i was like okay all right this might might be cool i'll see i'll see i'm not into the you know depth of daylight so if if it is anywhere near that probably not gonna be cool. yeah all right that's it we're ever fire let's get into the of course what i start every show with singular question to mario what have you been playing I have been playing uh, uh, biggest plug right now, twitch.tv slash Mario Bros. Oh. Uh, I've been streaming. I, I, I started yesterday as of recording this um, Escape Academy. It just came out on Game Pass. Yes, yeah, so we talked uh, about that last week. It, I think it, uh, well, it launched like two days ago, right? Yeah, it did. It did. It was two days ago to, to, to recording, the time of recording. And, and no, I mean, the game's awesome. It's honestly a game that I know when, um, when some people did the Summer Game Fest sort of... Uh, the, the 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 creator week or whatever the name yeah. of that was people came out of that very impressed and really liking the game i wasn't super interested and it wasn't until um until i saw more about it and 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 i greg miller from kind of funny he's he's a, he's a huge fan of the game and i we i usually have very similar tastes in games to him so you know it's a game pass game the beauty of game pass is why not give it a try right, right. i might have not spent 20 dollars on it but it's on game pass so i downloaded the game one and I thought it would be a fun streaming game. And that game's awesome, dude. Like, I don't know if you've played it, but it's it's really, really, really cool. It's um it's a puzzle game, but it really does feel like escape rooms. And they're not, you know, beat your head against the wall sort of level escape rooms. They they do just enough to make you feel like you're really, really smart by solving them. But at the same time, they're not very hard puzzles to solve. You're not, this is not like a The Witness, right? It's not like mm. completely super mental brainy at least what i've played so far and i know that even in the game they recommend you have a pen and, and paper Whoa. but well that's kind of cool yeah because there are certain things you have to keep in mind but you know if you've ever done an escape room it's like a video game version of it and it's it's really well done the people who worked on the game used to work for escape rooms and creating escape rooms and stuff so you can tell because it's really really fun uh you can play co-op you can play it solo i've been playing it solo but i could totally see the fun of it like co-op like just the chaos of, of, of trying to figure out what's happening but yeah no like legitimately it, 
caught me off guard, caught me by surprise. I thought it was going to be like a fun puzzle game, but there's there's something about it that's a little magical of when you solve something, you feel it makes you feel like you're the smartest person in the world. And that's that's a, a cool feeling. I'm pretty sure I downloaded this. So this is definitely something I'm going to have to play now. Uh, Give it I a go, am- dude. The, the, the very first stage is is a great show of of kind of like the, the beauty of the game. And, and, and if you like that, you're going to keep enjoying it. Mm, OK, OK. I'm definitely going to check this out because I'm actually in between uh, games because I, I I did the thing where like you beat a game and you're like, what's next? So because uh, right. I just I just went back last week. I, I was talking to him and I uh, went back to cyberpunk after almost two years. Yeah, yeah. That's the face. he ga- nice. That was the face he gave me to like. All right. Cyberpunk. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. what I did was I, I told myself I'll come back when it's on next gen, like when it gets the and I and I didn't do that. But right with this, I mean, really, like kind of drought that we have right now with games. I was like, you know what? Let me boot it up. I booted it up Good time. It's it's great. It, it was a fun time. Uh, it still has bugs, but it, it was still good. Like I, my favorite part was like the gunplay and I just beat it. I think like five, four, four days ago. Yes. Nice. So I Congrats. beat it. Congrats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like the the ending was kind of cool. It's it's I think it's meant to be open ended. Um, maybe it's not. I don't know. Let me know, achievers, if it wasn't. But it seemed to be like maybe a sequel would happen or something. I don't know. But uh, we'll we'll have to see from that. But yeah, it, I it was a good time. I uh, it's a it it just makes you kind of sadder because it's like wow, like this could have been. I mean, this could have really been what been. we all thought it was going to be. Yeah, right? I mean, it could have been like a, the next Skyrim, really. I mean, I really do think that like, it could have been like a Grand Theft Auto situation where like this is a huge game, but they made sure that didn't happen. Yeah, but Witcher uh, 4, man, all eyes on Witcher 4. All, oh, that would be the test, really. Maybe like, they, you, do you guys still got it or was themselves. it a fluke? Was it a fluke uh, yeah. with Witcher 3? We'll have to find out. But uh, right. that's that's really it. So I, I'm actually looking forward to that uh, Escape Academy recommendation. I did uh grab my god of war Yotnir edition today had to go mm. go do that at my local game shop nice. to make sure i get that i mean at, let's be honest obnoxious sized rep like like mess of garbage that i'm gonna Fantastic. pay like 200 bucks for so i'm very excited for that it's a big old hammer dude can't dude, go wrong yes one a one to one i'm i'm gonna have it on the podcast though that would be like my order mallet it'll be very fun love it moving on rumor roundup Microsoft is working with NISA to bring more games to Xbox. This is via Nick from Xbox Era Podcast. Uh, this really is just, hey, they're going to bring some more Jap- uh, Japan game, which is nice. We, I'm, I used you guys saw me freak out when they announced Persona for Xbox. Uh, so really, it's if Persona's here, anything's possible. So we'll right. have to see. Once Persona sort of crossed the border, it's like, okay, so Microsoft's legitimately trying. Good yeah, for them. No, you're legitimately trying. And, that was, and also, that, that probably... That probably cost some money. Let's be honest. Oh, I'm sure. So, Had so, to. so they're to. they're easy. They're they're they got the the checkbook open for all this stuff. But speaking of Microsoft, this has been speculation ahoy today. Wild speculation: that Microsoft may purchase Netflix because of this ad deal. I really wanted to bring this up because um, uh, it seems like Microsoft can't touch anything without someone saying, "Oh my God, are they going to buy them next?" Now, when you talk about a company like Microsoft, I don't blame people to think that, but right. uh, you just have to know like. I don't think that's very plausible, especially since they are purchasing a giant conglomerate yeah. right now. So, you know, everyone temper your expectations for now. That Yeah, I, I, I think I think people are running a little crazy because the Activision deal was so unexpected. Right. And it, and it really yeah. makes you feel like, oh, anything's possible. If Activision no, yeah. was bought, you can anything can be acquired. And that's true. But uh, you also have to realize that. Uh, everything can be acquired by Microsoft. Um, yeah. They're already going through a lot just on the Activision alone. And it's not just a question of money, right? Which, if you just want to talk straight up money, Microsoft can't buy Netflix right now. You know yeah. how much money Netflix is worth? Netflix is like one of the most valuable companies in the planet. Mm. Uh, they're worth a ridiculous amount of money and they just spent a ridiculous amount of money on Activision. Yeah. But even if money wasn't the issue, you have to understand that they're going through a lot of government regulations and and a lot of checks and a lot of stuff by, by, by federal, you know, by the federal government. Uh, they can't keep buying stuff. Uh, they they kind of have to relax for a little bit yeah. or, or the they, government's going to gotta... not let them continue to buy stuff. Yeah, you, you can't go like all right there's no monopoly here but you know 
Let me go ahead and grab this. Or we're gonna buy go Netflix this also. This one, <laughs> you're like, whoa, whoa, what's yeah. going on? Now, my counter to uh, I think some people would bring up is like, well, look at Disney, and I'm like, I you know, I don't blame people for bringing up Disney because that is an insane thing that continues to happen. But yeah, but. In the middle of a deal, I don't, I don't think there's a lawyer out there that'd be like, yeah, it'd be wise to go ahead and and, and drop another. I don't even, even, I, yeah. I don't even know the number to to buy. Netflix. Dude, e- I mean, uh, we're, yeah, no, we're it probably talking be anything hundred billion you can even imagine. Um, like, it's, it's probably like more a than fake, that. Yeah. a fake amount of money. Yes, the, yeah. for sure, a, a fake made amount. up amount of but, money. Yeah. Even the comparison of Disney, like, yeah, obviously they bought Marvel and they bought Star Wars. And then the big, big one is when they bought, you know, Fox. Yeah, Fox. Uh, Think about what they've acquired since Fox. It's not much. They've been quiet. And while they weren't acquiring Fox, they certainly weren't looking to acquire other stuff. And now that they did acquire Fox, they aren't really doing a lot more. Like, they're kind of just sitting on their laurels right now because they understand that if Disney tomorrow is like, we're going to buy... Fucking, I don't know, Netflix. Paramount <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Par- we're going to buy Paramount. Yeah, th- that's not going to work out for them. So they kind of bought their way, bought themselves out for a little bit. And it's the same thing with Microsoft. Uh, the Bethesda deal was already huge. The, <laughs> then the they Activision ran around and deal, did it again. Yeah, <laughs> they, did, they like did it 10 times more insane. They yeah. did the Bethesda deal on steroids. Microsoft's not acquiring stuff for a while. Yeah. I think I think people need to tamper their expectations. There's not going to be any acquirements from Microsoft for a, a, a long time because yeah. you know they, they won't be allowed to yeah, just buy I, more, I, and, I and they, they don't, also need to make money. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think that they would just open themselves up like that. And and if they do acquire something, I think it's a small studio or, or like something that would not raise eyebrows. Uh, this is a quick one. Red Dead Two. Um, uh, this is more rumors from Tez Two. We talked about this last week that apparently some remasters were shelved. Apparently there was a Red Dead Redemption Two remaster that was also shelved for current gen consoles, alongside a bunch of other remakes that was last week. I don't. We don't need to cover this again. We talked about this last week, but it is um crazy to think like, wow, I can't imagine there would have been too, uh, too much work. It, it doesn't sound what I mean, but I can't imagine it would have took that many resources to get uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 onto these gen consoles. So it's a little surprising, but um, apparently Rockstar is all eyes on GTA 6, which I don't blame them. They want to print money with that thing. So Yeah, I, I, I listen, I think I think legitimately it's, it's, it's a smart move, even though, um, you know, I'm sure I'm sure people wanted to play Red Dead Redemption 2 with all the bells and whistles. And I understand that. Yeah. But I think with with the last few little things that that that. Um, rockstar has done i think they they're realizing that they can't stretch themselves too thin and they need to put all eyes on gta 6 because uh if you really think about it is there a video game right now in in the last however many years that's more anticipated than gta 6 and i i don't think so gta 5 was a you know a phenomenon when it came out because it was so highly anticipated right and it continues to be one of the best selling games of all time and it and it's always topping the charts somehow um and GTA 6 is going to be no different they and they can't they really really can't mess that up um even something as simple as the, the you know the, the the whole remaster trilogy debacle mm. that one was a slam dunk for Rockstar right like that should have been a slam dunk that should have been an easy we put this out, it, it, the games look better, they run better, and everybody loves them. And that was a whole fiasco, right? Yeah. Because they they didn't put the, the resources that they needed into it. They, they, they certainly rushed it and didn't seem to put a lot of care into it. And then if you want to go even a little further deep, uh, you have stuff like Red Dead Online, right? Where Red, everybody expected Red Dead Online to be sort of the next GTA Online, right? Or, or maybe not as big because not as many people play Red Dead as, as GTA, but people certainly expected a lot of love to be put into Red Dead Online or at least and content. a lot of care or and content and and the crazy stuff you see in GTA 5 right like the, the the people who've been playing that game for 10 years and Red Dead Online wasn't that it's and many people would say it's a, it, it was kind of a failure yeah. right and Red Dead Redemption 2 I didn't like it when I originally played it I know a lot of people do love it it is a bit of a controversial game um, but I don't think they see Red Dead 2 as a failure, but I think they do realize that GTA 6 has to be, you know, a banger from the yeah. start, day one, and they, and 
people are anticipating this game and it's going to be the best selling game for years to come. And so they can't mess it up. They yeah. have to put all of their resources into it. And, and I understand that. And I think, you know, sure, it's going gonna, it's gonna to suffer for some people to not have ray tracing on, on Red Dead 2 on the PS5 or whatever. But I, I, I think people overall will be happier having GTA 6 be what everybody wants it to be. Yeah, I agree. I, if, if, if it is even a question that GTA 6 might be affected in some way, just, then just focus on that. We, you can wait to two, three, four or five years even to, to get this remaster to the next inch. Yeah. I, I don't really have a problem with this at all. It, it's, it's a little like, eh, that's cool. But would I really have replayed Red Dead 2? No, no, probably not. So, so, so yeah. It's boring I, I, as hell. That's why. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, boring he game. said it. He said it. Everyone. It's such a boring <laughs> game, dude. Jesus hey, my, Christ. I, I blew my mind. I was like, wow, my horse is pooping this is insane great it's great oh you, you know what <laughs> i love a. in a video game dude there's nothing i love more than hunting and having to put the the thing that i just hunt on the horse and then when i get off the horse i have to pick it out of the horse and i have to walk to the vendor to sell it great realism awesome thanks for just wasting three minutes of my life every time i'm trying to sell something <laughs> stupid ass game oh Dang, it's right or sake it it's multiple rumors surrounding bloodborne Sticking with the user on Twitter, someone asked if he could leak information about the Bloodborne remaster, and Jason replied, quote, can't leak what does not exist, end quote. This flies in the face of multiple other industry pundits and insiders. Things of those things are stating the exact opposite, that there is a remaster by Bloodborne and a sequel being made as well. Only time will tell who is right. We're, we have a little drama around insiders this week that I'm actually very excited for. We rarely get this. So to uh, basically bring people up to speed, Bunch of insiders have reported, I, w I, w I mean, at least a year, probably maybe six months, that there is something at Blue Point. It's Bloodborne and it's Bloodborne. And then they are also getting ready to make Bloodborne 2 after remastering this game. Now, I don't know if there's a person with more industry ties than Jason Schreier. So I can't imagine he's the one wrong in this, but I, I honestly don't know. I, I really am going to just sit sit back and see who's going to be right because i just don't have enough information myself i just have people's word and everyone that has said both statements have credibility so i i don't know i don't know yeah it's uh it's it's been such an interesting uh back and forth with the whole bloodborne remaster versus bloodborne remake versus are they making a bloodborne 2 yeah uh even going all the way back to like sekiro like when sekiro was very 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 first revealed um where it, it was only a screen that said shadows die twice with, with some with some voiceover. There were already people assuming that that was going to be Bloodborne 2 because it yep. seemed like Bloodborne 2 was such a such a slam dunk, right? Up until this year, I hadn't played any FromSoft games, so I really didn't know much about it nor cared that much about it. This year has been the year where I really dove super deep into FromSoft, and they, you know, Bloodborne has become one of my favorite games ever made. Oh. So I, I completely understand. Bloodborne fans and FromSoft fans wanting at the very least a remaster because I gotta tell you it's one of my favorite games ever made but it was so brutal to have to play that in 30 frames per second yeah, brutal. And, and and the fact that it's one of the only at this point you know PlayStation exclusives that hasn't had a word about coming to PC yeah. not even a peep is, is really bizarre and that's what led a lot of people to believing that maybe they're working on a remaster or a blue point remake or something along those lines Listen, it's 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 hard to argue against Jason Schreier when it comes to his work. Yeah. Uh cuz he's you know, he's very reputable, he's very trusted at what he does. Uh I don't recall many times where something he said was blatantly not true. He's he's one of those people that you you know, you kind of take his word for whatever he's telling you yeah. when it comes to the video game industry. Yeah, I agree. And it, it it just baffles me. Like the the thing that I don't understand is why not put a uh, put out a remaster? Why is Bloodborne a, a dead franchise? You know that that game came out what 20, 2014, 2015? Why has it been so long without anything from it? You know, like why is why is Bloodborne the one the one game that doesn't even have a PC port? I I, I just don't understand. I think it it would. I think fans want it clearly. Uh, if Demon Souls got a remake, why wouldn't Bloodborne? But yeah, I, I, I almost don't want to believe him, but I really don't have a reason. I mean, he's, I mean, he almost, I mean, he probably is as close to a perfect record as you could probably get. 
So I, I find it hard to just say there's just no way, but how is there nothing? So may, so, but, but maybe wow. there is Bloodborne too, but then at this point we're kind of, I think we're like, we're just pulling hairs. So I, I really, I don't even know what to, to think of this. This really kind of blew me away. I, I revisited like, like who said it and like at what times and people said it with pretty certainty. I think a couple of people from like Xbox era, I think a couple of PlayStation insiders said it too. I'm, I'm blanking on who it was, but um damn yeah i can't remember who it is but um but it it they were credible people and they they usually don't just say stuff so we will have to see i really this really kind of blew me back it was like really nothing and and like you said like i would even believe just a pc port and then like i i could believe like just a pc port and then nothing to ps5 even though that would still be confusing so we'll just we'll have to see We'll have to see. And wasn't yeah. uh, wasn't Bloodborne on PC in the Nvidia leaks? Or am I cra- Did I just make that up? I I believe it was in the. Inv- it's one of the ones that was in the Nvidia leaks. It's one of like the only things in the Nvidia yeah. leak that hasn't become true yet, which has been even more speculation yeah. about it. But it it I seems don't to, have there was to happen, even, right. There was even that meme on the last uh, state of play when they announced. I don't even. I don't remember what. PC port, but they go, oh, for all PlayStation fans that have been dying for a PC port, and everybody was like, it's Bloodborne, and it was something else. I don't even remember what else oh. it was, but it's like, oh. yeah, it was Ratchet. I think it was Ratchet yeah, and Clank, I right? So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's like, oh, man, <laughs> come on, dude. <laughs> well, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I would be very curious at, at Sony, like, what, what's the reason? Because they, because they know, and they have a huge projection. I think that, I think their sales for this year for PC specifically was $300 million. So that's a lot of money. That's it's a that's big not, market for them. They, they wouldn't yeah. be doing this if it wasn't a, a good viable market. Yeah, they, they clearly like such a slam dunk. They man. clearly love it. So I, I'll be shocked if Bloodborne doesn't, doesn't come to PC. It's, especially with the, you know, the what FromSoft is now, like they've transcended not just for hardcore FromSoft fans, but just video game you know gamers quote unquote in general yeah. understand that from software is one of the premier developers in the world and they have a gigantic following very very you know passionate following there's a lot of people in that following that that never had a, a ps4 or a ps5 and they haven't played bloodborne and, and with the height of elden ring you would think at least a pc port would be such a slam dunk but i i, I don't really know i don't i have no idea what's going on with that Speaking with a little bit of drama coming from kind of leakers and still speaking with Jason Schreier, according to ACG, this is a kind of, you know, a uh, podcaster, YouTuber kind of of uh, personality on Twitter said that the ne- and it was just a sim- it was a single line. It wasn't replied to anyone. He just said next Assassin's Creed game is Aztecs. And that was it. And uh, this is another guy where people were like, oh, OK, he's probably right. But again, Jason Schreier comes out uh, to refute the claim. So speaking on a post on Reddit, Jason stated the following quote. The next AC game is Rift, which he did actually report on this last February, um, which is going to be set in Baghdad. After that, it will be AC Infinity, and that's going to include a bunch of different games, experiences, biomes, or whatever you want to call them. I've heard about the main two, and neither of them are Aztec, end quote. So that's another... He came out and was like, nope, that's that's not right, and he named it. I did. We did cover the February thing back, um, back in, of course, February, when he originally did this. Rift is going to be about uh Bassam and it's going to be more stealth based stuff and it's apparently was originally going to be an expansion but now it's its own game and that should be coming out relatively soon i wouldn't be shocked if that's announced in september for the new assassin's creed game so we'll probably see Bassam. and then to make the saga a little more confusing jeff grubb has heard that the next mainline game uh, ac game will be in japan but he does not know if that game is infinity or not so he doesn't know if that is after infinity or in i would assume it's in infinity although we still don't fully understand what infinity is is it a set of yeah, games it's, it's, is it like an online service thing uh so i'm still a little confused on what infinity is to begin with uh, yeah I, I i and i don't think you're alone with that because we've heard that infinity is is one sort of game as a service that's going to continue adding drops in different locations or it, we've heard a lot of different stuff about infinity and and the truth of the matter is, this is the longest we've gone without knowing what the next, next Assassin's Creed game is, right? This is the yeah. longest break they've taken. And it's it, it seems very clear that they're once again sort of taking the franchise in a new direction. Um, we had the, the sort of the classic Assassin's Creed games, right? Every year, we had that up until Origins. Yep. And that sort of Origins and Odyssey are its own, like, super heavy, gigantic Witcher 3-style RPG. 
and and both of those games are great. I enjoy the both of those games, but it it definitely seems like they're going to take the franchise in another way uh because now we're talking about possible multiple games and possible games as a service and sort of like a little bit different genres and stuff so it seems like ubisoft is trying to trying to expand assassin's creed even more i mean it's already been sort of two different frame like genres like the old school were the traditional sort of action stealth open worldy games and now now it's a gigantic rpg right so it looks like they're trying to switch up the formula a little bit again, but we're going to know soon enough. I mean, in September, in September, they said they were going to announce the, um, yeah. the, whatever the next Assassin's Creed game is. We'll see if that's, if that's Rift or if that's Infinity or whatever it could both. be. Uh, or both. Who knows? Maybe they do a double release or something. I, at the end of the day, we'll know soon enough by the September event, or let's be honest, Assassin's Creed <laughs> yeah, is kind or, of known for leaking ahead yeah. of time. So uh, probably, you know, you know, I wouldn't be surprised in August we have a trailer out yeah, and about because yeah, yeah. that's how yeah, it usually happens leech. for Assassin's Creed. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah. Yep. Ass- Assassin's Creed is definitely one of those franchises that no matter what, I kind of pin it as a leak. Yeah. We're going to know what it is at some point. So, you know, and, and it, thousands of people work on these games. So it, it, something's going to leak at some point. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just have to see. I, I'm most interested in Infinity, but um, like I am with a lot of online games, the most... Uh, trepidatious i I would say i Mm -hmm. I have no idea i love assassin i played them all and last thing i want is them to try this free to play online thing and uh, ubisoft not in the best state right now so i i i don't want them diving headfirst assassin's creed nfts y'all yeah let's get those nfts guys get your nfts get your mask whatever the hell that was play 200 hours get a mask Woo! oh yeah what a deal it on the blockchain Come on, that's why we play games, right? To to make a profit. That's yeah. the, that's that's why we love video games. Monetize. Yeah. Uh, let's start the new show. Skate developers. Let's talk about them. Developer Full Circle announced some new details about the anticipated sequel for the aptly named skateboarding franchise, Skate, and it will be called well, it will be called Skate. But there is more to the my chagrin. It seems that Skate will actually be a free to play title. Here's a quote from Darren Chunk, creative director on Skate, on why this choice may have been made. Quote. It's an authentic evolution of the franchise and taking what Skate 3 was in 2010 and bringing it into now and to the future. That is not only an evolution of the franchise, but it's an evolution of where skateboarding is and, and was from 2010 to now and also where games are from then to now, end quote. Now that kind of word salad aside, they're also unveiled that the game will be available on PlayStation, Xbox, PC, will also support crossplay and cross progression. Skate is really developed by EA Black Box, launched September 13, 20, 2007 on Xbox 360. September 24th for PS3. Released at Summit Claim, it was quickly followed by Skate 2 on January 21st, 2009, and Skate 3, May 11th, 2010. Needless to say, Skate fans have been hungry for another game in the franchise, or just another game in its place, and Skate 3 is widely seen as a last great skateboarding game. I don't know your relationship with Skate, but I have a deep relationship with the game. I loved Skate 1 as a, as a kid. I mean, I, I was a teenager playing these games every time they came out, I'd buy the new one. Love my time with it. Now, I will say my excitement dipped after seeing it was a free-to-play title. Now, now it is, instead of me being surprised, I feel like I'm like I'm like a, a disgruntled guy like, like, like with my arms crossed. Like, all right, show, show me. Show me what's, what it is now. Like, so it, so I, to me that this is going to be good. It, yeah, yeah. So like, pr- pr- you got, now you have something to prove. So I do feel a little, um, uh, I guess entitled is the word I want to use. Like, I, I, you know, I probably shouldn't be too aggressive with this, but when I saw it, I really was like, can, can I just pay for a skate game, please? I, like, I really don't want this again. Like, I don't want, you know, the free to play kind of cycle we go through, right? Mario, I, I don't know if you play a lot of free to play games, but like they come out, you know, they suck for a little while. And like six months later, it's like, oh, it's, it's kind of good now. And you come back, you play, like, all right, come on. And, and you kind of do that a little bit over and over again. And I was just kind of hoping I could pay 50, 60, Ducks for a skate game. I play skate, but I guess not. What yeah. was your What were your thoughts when you saw this? My my history with skate is uh is is not extensive. Uh, skate three demo on PS three is by far the demo that I've played the most in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I that was a great some reason demo. That I remember demo, that. I remember dude, that. that demo was a good one. For some reason, that demo was a mainstay on my PS three. All my friends and I would play hours of that. Like I've milked the hell out of that mm-hmm. demo i've played hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of that game to the point where i've never even felt like buying the game because i'm like all right i did everything i wanted i'm good 
there's that there's that one mode where you're in a big old ramp and it shows what bones you break yep. dude i've spent at least 50 hours on that ramp alone mm-hmm. uh so you know uh, skate 4 just as a as a person who's interested in the video game industry right and and obviously cares about the the behind the scenes and all that the fact that skate 4 was finally happening after after it was such a meme was great um I wasn't particularly surprised by the news that they're going to make it, you know, a free to play sort of game games as a service ordeal. But, you know, I think me and a lot of people who play games and, and, and you too, it, we're a little, you know, standoffish when, when we hear games as a service, because uh, I think it's a lot easier to fail in that genre than to succeed in it. Yeah. If you succeed in it, then, then you're huge, right? Like it, it, there's no real in between it. It's almost like, if you if you have a good free to play game, a good uh, games as a service, you're going to be very popular. You're uh, you, you're going to be one of the most viewed games on streaming services and like Twitch and stuff. And on the other hand, you have Marvel's Avengers, right? Where and that's not even a free game. That's no. a, that's a paid game. That was a paid games as a service. So it's not it's not apples to apples. But either way, when you hear games as a service, as you know. Uh, uh, as somebody who's been looking at the market recently, it's 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 never a surefire thing, especially coming from EA. Uh, EA does not have the best reputation recently with you know their online games. You, you look at the paid ones, Star Wars Battlefront. Yeah, <laughs> even the paid ones. Imagine the free ones. Like Star Wars Battlefront Two took like what two years for yeah. it to finally be a game that people enjoyed, um, and and that wasn't milking money from people and. The bat the EA has almost like single handedly killed the Battlefield franchise, which like at, at one point so Battlefield was as big as Call of Duty. Yeah, like they were each other's rivals. Bat- a Battlefield Four, Battlefield Four, even though it had a, a ton of issues at launch, was a massively popular game. It was, dude. And it was I huge. played hours of that I feel like game. That game was growing awesome. Up, I feel like people growing up now just they hear. Battlefield was as big as Call of Duty, and like stop. Like, but it no, was, but it, that's but not, it, it was. It was. So I was growing up around then. Like, like it. We had like groups of like, all right, we're we're about Battlefield, and we'll play it. And then they, you know, we'll buy. Like, there were people that were like playing Battlefield and Call of Duty almost tangentially, like together. Like, and, Absolutely, and I was one of those people. Yeah, me too. I played both. I love Bad Company was some of their biggest stuff. Bad Company Two, I remember like taking over. For a while like One everyone talked biggest about games ever dude. yeah it's, people love to back yeah. them too and battlefield 4 yeah you're you right it did have a lot of problems but after like i feel like it was like i can't remember i think it was like six it was like four or six months or something after that it was like huge like it, like i never yeah. waited for lobbies in that game it was so good and and really ever since battlefield 4 it feels kind of kind of like they just don't know what to do like that's just, their last I would consider Battlefield 4 to be their last successful like online based game, yeah. which is nuts because Battlefield 4 had so many issues at launch. So, 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 so many issues. Right. And, you know, the, the Battlefield franchise, they did what they did to it. The Titanfall franchise, they did what they did to it. Now, the, the, oh, time the, time. I guess the counter to this is Apex Legends, right? right. Um, yeah. Apex Legends is one of those games that, they launched it at the time. People were thinking that you know they were crazy, but I think respawn is is in a different category St- with EA. You I don't stole, stole the stole them out of my mouth, my friend. I don't I I I, I don't compare what respawn does to, with e, what EA as a whole does because respawn is incredible. Respawn is the best that EA has to offer, and yeah. I think anybody would agree to that. And you know, sure, they did it once, and we called them crazy at the time. And Apex Legends is huge, and it's my favorite battle royale game. It's 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 great. I've I've streamed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of Apex Legends. So, mm-hmm. never say never. Um, they they clearly seem to be putting a lot of care and effort into into Skate. Um, I really like that they're doing this with both Dead Space remake and Skate, where they're not completely silent on it. If you follow them on Twitter yeah. or, or in social media, they're posting a lot about the development progress. And I think that's a really cool thing that devs are starting to do now. Um, just kind of posting models and showing you how the development's going. I think it's cool. I, I think this game c- can be huge. And I think if if they play their, their cards right, I could see this being a, a gig- giant Twitch game and, 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 a, and a really popular game. But yeah. EA and free to play and, and, and micro transactions and, mm. and, and pay to win. And it, it scares me, dude. Like, yeah. I'm not 100% confident that this is going to be good. And 
and that's not I don't think that's on the devs. I think it's more on just EA's reputation. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't necessarily blame Full Soaker. I just as soon as I hear the uh, free to play, I just go like, all right, how bad is it going to be? Like, that's how I feel like, all right, what do I, what do I have to buy or 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 like, am I going to have like bare bones, like stuff to play because it's going to come out like way too early because it's free to play. And that's like the justification. And there's just so much. So I I, I think Skate does lend itself to the potential of it being free to play like it it does have a great uh pillar to be a free to play game but i just can't imagine the EA executives just being cool you know like i've just pictured them coming in and be like well how you know what do you what do you how do you get make making money off the you know like that's that's why i feel now and again you brought you brought up apex like you know it's respawn i feel like we're just talking we're talking about different calibers here like it respawn is might, might be one of the best fps studios like right now in the world yeah, I mean, fps i, I would so, just say studios like if you look at jedi fall in order it. i think yeah i think they're incredibly talented man so that it's they're up there with like insomniac like like they're, absolutely. they're great studios so i, yeah, I, don't I think, think they're one of the premier studios in the world right now yeah so that, i don't really think that's a fair comparison but we'll have to wait we'll have to see now now i do feel like the person that's kind of like got their own cross like all right no show me what see, you I got mean, yeah, so. The the last thing I'll say is like in a world where they do nail this, like imagine how big a, a, a skate mode that's like a Fall Guys type, right? Like yeah, where you're going point. through crazy obstacle courses with twenty other skaters and you're trying to trying to be the fastest there. Like that formula could work. I could see how that could be a ton of fun. And and the skate games are all about you know yeah the the mechanics feel great, but it's all about how fucking crazy you can get, right? Yeah. Like it's about crazy stunts and, and and just wacky stuff in the in the physics system and all that so that could lend itself to a really fun formula on a free-to-play game like we saw now that five guys five, five guys fall guys went free to play they've resurfaced and it's it's one of the biggest games in the world right now and yeah if if they play their cards right they can do it it's just you know it's a yay we'll have to see that pescatello helped me out uh today and right before we went live uh threw up a bunch of mpd results i want to cover a bunch of these because pretty interesting so as of june so this is for the month of june here's the top 10 games on dollar sales for xbox let's go for 10 10 forza horizon 5 call of duty black ops 3 call of duty modern warfare 2019 call of duty black ops cold war far cry 6 call of duty vanguard f1 2022 overwatch Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga and number one Elden Ring. Let's uh, let's let's keep that with uh, PlayStation number ten Gran Turismo Seven. Oof. Call of Duty Vanguard Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart Overwatch The Quarry Horizon Two Forbidden West Marvel Spider Man's Miles Morales Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga MLB The Show Twenty Two and Elden Ring. Keep going with Nintendo number ten Demon Slayer. Oh my God. Kimetsu no Yaba, the Hinokami Chronicles. Ah, sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> Animal Crossing, New Horizons, Lego Star Wars, The Skywalker Saga, Pokemon Legends, Arceus, Fire Emblem Three Hopes, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Kirby and the Fire at Lambs, Nintendo Switch Sports, Mario Kart 8, Mario Strikers Battle League at number one. Very surprising for at least me. And then this is all the 12 months ending. So this is the basically the year to date for... Uh, the platform sales, so dollar sales still. Number 10, Horizon 2, Forbidden West, Pokemon Legends Arceus, Far Cry 6, FIFA 22, Battlefield 2042, Lego Star Wars, The Skywalker Saga, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. A little cheating that it's both, but hey. Modern Madden NFL 22, Call of Duty Vanguard, Elden Ring, Chopping the Tarts at number one. Very surprising. Beating Call of Duty. That's no small feat. And this is year-to-date sales. We're not going to do all 20. We're just doing number 10. So 10, NFL 22, Mario Kart 8, Kirby and the Forgotten Lands, Gran Turismo 7, Call of Duty Vanguard, MLB The Show 22, Horizon 2, Forbidden West, Pokemon Legends Arceus, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, Elden Ring. Those are the top 10 for your year-to-date of 2022. Mario, not bros. Anything out of there that you want to pick out? Now, I want to bring up that he did tweet out that Elden Ring now ranks among the top 10 best-selling premium games in the U.S. in the market all-time dollar sales. That is no small feat. Elden Ring, like you said before, has become huge. But is there anything you want to bring up? Is it Elden Ring? Is it anything on these platforms that you want to talk about? Listen, obviously, shout out to Elden Ring. Shout out to From Software. I think they're finally, as somebody who just got into them, they're they're one of the best developers, if not the best developer in the world. They deserve all the love 
that they're getting, and I and I and I'm extremely happy for them. I still haven't played Elden Ring because I'm oh. working my way up. So I, when excited. I get to it, I'm sure I'm sure it'll become one of my favorite games ever made. But uh, the one that I want to shout out is is sort of uh, I guess Elden Ring's little bro- little brother because it got a little bit bullied by it. But Horizon uh, Forbidden West, like. Yep. When that game came out, it was there were all the memes of like, oh, Elden Ring totally, you know, overtook it, and yeah, that's true for like game of the re- game of the year conversations and stuff. Uh, but people were 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 kind of harping on it for not selling as quote unquote as much as 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 people want it. Uh, Elden Ring is on a different level. It's a GTA style level, like obviously not to the level of GTA, but it's but it's it going to be the huge. chart topper. Yeah, it's 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 bigger than Call of Duty. So Elden Ring is not you can't compare Elden Ring to anything else. Horizon Forbidden West being number four in in like the top money making games, uh, it, it's fantastic for them. I'm I'm happy for Gorilla. I'm happy for Sony. It's it's no slouch. And I also want to give some love to MLB The Show 22 because every single year MLB The Show is one of the best uh, sports games ever, and yep. I'm glad that they're getting love. So yeah, I do. I, I hear that. I, I hear that a lot. Is MLB is it's always incredible. is always the one where like they seem to ha- kind of nail the yearly cycle where something does kind of feel new every single time. So yeah, I do, I do, I do love that. I, I wish, um, uh, because I used to love Madden and NBA. I used to buy them like almost every year. I kind of hope that they take some pointers from MLB. Cause I just, I, I find it hard to even get excited about them anymore because it's just like, if I have, I feel like if I have like the four year old edition is it feels, just feels the same almost. So, I do, yeah. I do hope that they take some pictures for that. But yeah, Elder Ring is that's insane. They they have topped, they have topped the dollar charts. Like the, from Software is now up there. They they are now one of the premier easily, developers in yeah, the world that Absolutely. we were talking about. Yeah, like they are, if it was ever in doubt, and I think it's clear that people. I think we're in a Witcher three and a um uh hmm. I'm I'm blanking on another game I wanted to bring up, but but where you, I, every, a bunch I, of developers like to think of, can point to and be like, hey, this single player game, like it sold so much, like we don't have to make everything online because look at this, you know, as an example, it's it's a it's a Sony first party game that's not a Sony first party game because yeah. for for the longest the PlayStation Studios games were the games that were championing like you can be a giant seller and be single player only. And that message, I think Sony really helped push it across. This is proving that even further, you know, by by a by a triple A like third party studio, and yeah, it's it's giant, and they deserve it. Good for them. Good for them, and it is one of the greatest. I can't I can't wait for you to play that. I can't. Stoked, stoked. Now, speaking of Bandai Namco, with not great news, Bandai Namco has seemingly been hacked. Although the severity of the hack seems to still be in the air. When speaking about the hack, Bandai Namco said on. July 3rd, an intrusion occurred and struck several internal systems and, quote, several group companies in Asian regions, end quote. The company has since cut the affected services, um, did fuel a supposed leak of the company's launch lineup, but it's unclear if this is legitimate or if someone's just trying to fake something. Um, I almost don't want to read this because it seems so fake, but I guess we can have some fun. So this was leaked as their supposed release scheduling so we're gonna uh cover them and we will uh debate the uh realities i guess i guess you could say so it just said q1 armor core um uh dragon ball the breakers which is a super weird game i don't know are you a dragon ball fan uh mario yeah i love dragon did you see did you see this game i did weird so weird right it's like dead by daylight but in dragon ball i was like i couldn't believe it was real like it felt like a fever dream but uh, and it just says Q2, Little Nightmares 3, Super Fighter Z, uh, Digimon Story, Cyber Suit 2, Q3, ER, Barbarians of the Badlands, Tales of Ascens- Ascension, Tekken 8, Q4, Code Vein 2, OPM Fighter Association, Xenoverse 3. Now, the leak was like on a, like a computer screen. So I don't yeah. think any of this is real, but... Want to cover it because it is technically news, but take all that with a grain of salt. I saw it and I was like, this looks like someone just made this in like 10 minutes. So we will see if literally any of that is true. There are a couple things where it's like, are they working on Tekken? Yeah, I, I think we can almost guarantee that, right? Will it come out in Q3? We'll have to see. Um, Xenoverse 3 is actually the one thing I want to bring up. Like, that actually might be a thing that they are making. Um, just because they are still 
making Dragon Ball Z Universe 2 content. Like, they just released a new pack, I believe, two weeks ago. Uh, so I definitely uh, believe that at some point that they are going to um, make a Xenoverse 3. Now, Armored Core, I, again, don't think it's coming out that soon, but I wanted to bring it up just as a, a question. We did have um, Miyazaki talking about an existence of another game that they're currently working on that might be close. I just wanted to pick your brain about this. Do you actually think it might be Armor Core is the game that's kind of in the background that they sort of referenced? Because they referenced th that same game back in, I believe, 2019 in a separate interview. It might have been 2020. I don't remember. But there has been a game just kind of cooking in the background. Sim similar to like Sekiro like that you mentioned that's like they, they, they brought it up, but we didn't know what it was because we didn't think they'd just make like a Ninja Gaiden almost type game. So do you even do you think that the uh, fan um uh, from soft will go back to armor core i think it would it, it i don't see why not i think it would make sense for them to go back to it i don't know if it'd be as soon as q1 uh no. of next year that that seems definitely way too early for it but yeah yeah i think i think that that would be an easy win for them you know uh go back to armor core like the it's not the franchise that made from software popular because that's obviously you know dark souls and demon souls and stuff but yeah. it's it was prior to the souls era it was their bread and butter it was armor core a lot of people love armor core and i think uh, it would be very interesting to see what a modern day from software armor core game looks like so I, I i certainly think it's plausible i wouldn't be surprised if it happens and i'm interested to see what it looks like i'm interested to see if it borrows some of the gameplay of of the souls you know it, it, if if it's sort of like Sekiro, where it's the same thing but with mm. a little bit of a switch up, because uh, I would be more surprised if they do come out with an Armored Core game and it's just a full on just mech shooter, nothing to do with yeah. their usual formula. That would be more surprising. I feel like that <laughs> that would kind of come out of left field a little bit. But we'll see. Well, yeah, we'll have to see. I I don't really have too much to bring into this because I'm just not an Armored Core guy, but it would be cool to see them make an. Uh, basically, what I picture is just the anime Gundam, but like from software, and that sounds awesome. Like being able to control like a giant mech, just wrecking fools. Yeah, yeah, that sounds cool. Maybe have some sort of cool like mech blade or something. Yeah, so yeah, that that would be awesome. I will have to see. Uh, I do, I do really think Armor Core is the next thing, only because we just we haven't. It's rare that no one brings it up, so I just feel like it has to be in the background somewhere. Play. Copenhagen-based Nordics Games has fully acquired Supermassive. Nordic Games by no means a small publisher, but they have under their wing currently Avalanche Studios, which is uh, the Hunter franchise, Flashbulb Games, Trailmakers, Kogama, which is like a Flash game site. I had to actually look at this. I had no, what a, had no idea what this was. Mercury Steam, love that studio. Castlevania and Metroid Dread. Nitro Games, uh, they have like mobile games and Blast Heroes. Star Stable Entertainment, which is a Star Stable Online. It's like a like a horse game and now super massive of course behind until dawn and the recently released quarry um i am shocked that they that no one bigger got them if i'm being honest uh nordic games again no by no means they're small they have all those studios but i would have bet money that one of the big two got them but yeah they, they, they are now they're super, acquired. super massive was like almost like a shoe in for a playstation acquisition at some point you'll you it it kind of fits that formula really really well. You would have thought that PlayStation was going to acquire them at some point, but listen, with the Quarry, they became a, a one of the big AAA you know developers, and they have their own niche and they have their own sort of style of game that they do better than anybody else. So good, you know, good for Nordisk Games, good for them. I hope Supermassive got that paycheck, and I hope they are able to keep pumping these games out because you know the Quarry is awesome. Until Dawn's awesome. I haven't played much of the Dark Pictures anthology, but. I mean good for them man like i uh, i don't think this is the you know the gigantic news of of it, i feel like it would be bigger news if somebody like playstation account acquired them but good for them at the end of the day got your money i was actually surprised um that no one was talking about this really i i didn't really see too many people just bringing this up and i think it's just because it's not very exciting right these kind of random uh, like literally they're in copenhagen and they uh they just bought super massive and it just kind of seems like oh okay and, and like and everyone just kind of moved on and I don't blame them because, yeah, you're right. It's not super exciting. It is another acquisition. So it's like, ah, OK, cool. Like well, the, the, the new thing, uh, you know, will happen and we'll just stop talking about it. But, yeah, uh, again, I was surprised. I think I wouldn't be shocked if PlayStation and Supermassive had a discussion about the purchase and it maybe fall through. Or was it enough from one side or the other? Uh, but I am shocked that they that, that it never happened. We'll have to. Uh, I hope one day we know why, because there's just no way that they didn't 
they didn't bring it up like, hey, well, you know, how much? Speaking of PlayStation, seems to be a new loyalty system for anyone in the PlayStation ecosystem. It's called PlayStation Stars. It's a free to join program that will launch later this year. You earn rewards by completing, quote, campaigns and activities, end quote. The really interesting one is the possibility of trophies via the PlayStation blog. There will be a certain tasks that may include earning a specific trophy. Also, there is a way of just gaining points with purchases. This type of system seems pretty standard if you dabble in Nintendo rewards or Microsoft rewards. One way to differentiate this, however, is, quote, digital collectible, end quote. Back to the PS blog, quote, collectibles are as diverse as our portfolio of products and franchises. They are digital representations of things that PlayStation fans enjoy, including figurines of beloved and iconic characters from games and other forms of entertainment, as well as cherished devices that tap into Sony's history of innovations, end quote. This also seems to possibly be a relaunch of Sony's rewards, or this might be where just all the gaming from Sony rewards will be going to. So I don't know if you dabble in any of these programs. I actually do a little bit in all of them just to kind of in the background generate like coupons and things. And I think it's kind of cool that PlayStation is making this kind of like, you you know, we'll have like little campaigns like, hey, go make this trophy in, in God of War Ragnarok or something. I thought it was pretty cool. I'm curious what digital collectibles will be. I'm I'm curious if it will get so far as like maybe you'll get a little figurine to put on your profile or something when people view your PlayStation account or something. We'll have to see. But uh, Mario Bros, what do you think? No, I, I, listen. I, I I tweeted out when they first announced this. I think it's I think it's cool. I mean, I I I know people that really love the Microsoft Awards and really know how to game that system and get a lot of like gift cards and stuff out of it. Emmett being one of them. Yes. Um, Emmett yeah, is big fan knee deep into microsoft rewards and good for him uh, i love the, the the nintendo like uh, points system or whatever where every time you buy a game you get a little bit of gold coins and you can put that towards another game i like that too because it's like i don't have to focus on it so like, yeah it just it's such a it, it's an easy simple it's a no-brainer you don't have to put any energy into it by just and it, it incentivizes you spending more money because then you feel like you're getting money off it's 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 easy, and I like that PlayStation seems to be doing the same thing. That's the part that I'm really going to be focusing on, maybe now and then with with trophies. Although um, I I haven't cared about trophies as much recently as I used to. Oh, but heartbreaking. But either way, either way, it, it's cool, man. Like it, it's always a nice feeling when I'm on the Nintendo eShop and I'm going to buy a game, and the game's ten bucks, and I have eight bucks. I'm like, oh great, I just bought the game for two bucks. I yeah, feel, yeah. I feel I feel good about myself. I, it, I do too. It's at the end of the day, this is this sounds like it's a decision for you know it. It's never just from the good of their heart because they probably understand that incentivizing people to buy more games to get more money off to buy more games is going to be more revenue. But it's it's consumer friendly. I, I I fuck with it. I like it. Yeah, yeah, it is consumer friendly. Yeah, we could talk about the psychology of like thinking that you'll save money by buying a thing, but you wouldn't have spent the money anyway. Yeah, we, so yeah, right. it, there is a background of like. You know, are you saving money or are you just spending money that you wouldn't have to be, you know, so that, that that I agree with. But aside from that, yeah, this is a very cool thing to do. And and I like that it is in the background, kind of like Nintendo Awards. You'll just when you buy something, you'll just get some points. And then the trophy thing just sounds fun, although I imagine it will be uh probably for the harder ones or. um, and it just might be for the more difficult trophies, so that can uh, make it not as fun. But aside from that, yeah, I. I I can't really get bummed or excited because it's, you know, it's like another thing that I'll have. According to some new job reports, Respawn is making a single player FPS game. Oh, did you guys hear that? I think that was Emmett screaming. I think he was screaming for joy. <laughs> now, much can be gleaned from the posting themselves. The website describes it as, quote, Apex Universe FPS incubation title end quote woof you, you know how to talk to me and other postings state quote a brand new respawn is single player adventure end quote of course respawn is best known for apex legends the widely popular free-to-play fps but prior to that they had somewhat of a large following around their games that inspired apex legends originally titanfall and titanfall 2 we haven't seen a single player fps game from the developers since 2016's titanfall 2 so Job postings, of course, meaning probably something way in the future, but there is a slight possibility that they may be a Titanfall title because it does say Apex Universe FPS, which is like, but Apex is in Titanfall, so aren't you kind of making a Titanfall? So we'll have to see what uh, what route they'll take because if they're going to call this thing like Apex X and it's like 
a, a, a single player game you're like well you could just call it the time fall but we'll have to we'll have to see uh, mario bro uh, do, do, you said you love apex legends this seems like right up your alley i love apex legends i love titanfall too uh it's hilarious because this is not going to be a titanfall game no and that's the funniest part of it yeah that it it's uh a game a game that was a spin-off of titanfall it's getting its own spin-off but it's not titanfall uh <laughs> it's, that is exactly what it is too they're gonna call it apex whatever and it makes sense apex is a bigger franchise than titanfall it's a it bigger is. success than titanfall it, is. it hurts titanfall it hurts like titanfall, hell for you saying that but it's true absolutely and listen titanfall isn't the big success it is because of ea ea with titanfall 1 and with titanfall 2 they botched them they were both very good games uh and ea just made a lot of bad decisions around them uh titanfall 2 deserves to be a much bigger game than it is but they yep. sort of self cannibalized with it and that's a that, that that's a topic for another day but ea basically killed titanfall and respawn just put out Ti apex legends which like do you remember when those news came out that there's going to be an apex a titanfall universe battle royale was it 2018 like, Jesus. like february was it january yeah, everybody's like jesus christ this is going to be sounds so bad why terrible. would you even do this this sounds awful it's called apex what legends apex awesome. legends that sounds terrible like really yeah. think about that the name apex legends sounds like the most Absolutely. generic like thing ever but when it came out oh my god was it good wow oh, so i couldn't get enough I, of this game. makes sense to me i'm excited for this i think this can this can be a really cool game in the apex universe the people who are into apex legends lore are all about it there is a lot of lore there if you don't know the world of apex legends is deep uh so this is awesome i i'm honestly excited for this this is not titanfall 3 I'm sorry to break it to you guys. It is not Titanfall 3, but it's going to be fun. I think I heard Emmett scream again. But yeah, <laughs> I am I'm excited, but I, I am a little I'm a little sad that we're not going to see a Titan. Because I, I, I think that is the one thing that's just gone is just we'll never we'll never see probably a Titan falling from the sky, which was one of the coolest thing ever. So well, again, this is this is if they're putting up job posting, we won't see this for a while, but I I am excited that we'll get a respawn single player. They proved they still had it with Jedi Fallen Order, right? They still had that story chops. That was a great game. We'll see that sequel very soon. And we'll have to see if they still got those chops for the FPS single player. And I'm sure they will. I'm very excited. But I am still a little sad that it's not Titanfall 3. Seems to be a, a big major error in communications this week pertaining to Ubisoft's past games. Originally on storefronts, it was stated that you would no longer be able to access the entire game even if you had purchased it previously on stores like steam this seems to have been a miscommunication so there's now a support article that everyone right now can go check if you'd like um you could just type in probably steam ubisoft error or removing games you'll probably find it um and you can find all the games that are going to be affected by the change most of it is all of their online services to the games will be gone um september 1st so there was a little it seems like I don't know how you got that misworded, but they said you would not be able to access the game. Now, there is a portion of this that I am still a bit confused about. The support article of some of them says you will not be able to access the DLC. So I assume the DLC pertaining to like online modes, maybe. But I was trying to figure that out. And even the support article is kind of vague with what it means. So we will have to see. But the story from earlier this week was that most of the online services for the games will be gone September 1st. E3 announced last week it will be returning to LA. As a quick reminder, E3 was canceled this year, but after announcing a partnership with Reed Pop, the production company behind PAX, New York Comic Con, and much more, they will be returning to the LA Convention Center after three years. Mario Bros, I didn't get into the game industry for in time for E3, and I missed it. Yeah. As soon as I started, COVID happened. So I am hoping I, uh, to get to one before it is gone forever. What do you think? I I got into the last true E3. That's the only E3 I've been to, and that's E3 2016. Mm. Uh, if you remember, after 2016, 2017 is when they opened they it opened up to the public, the public where right? you could yeah. get tickets. And I think that was the beginning of the end for yeah. E3. Because um, shortly after that, PlayStation pulled out of E3, and that was very 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 bad for e3 because very. if you remember correctly the last four or five years of e3 the biggest announcements the biggest games except for breath of the wild in 2016 were all playstation games yep uh the playstation showcase was the biggest showcase every single time uh 
He's not know, over. Man. He's not overstating this. I want to. Br- I was an Xbox fan back then, so I know. Like we would lie to us, be, be excited and stuff, and then we would just not get games for like the next five years. And we didn't know at the time, of course. But when PlayStation left, I was like an Xbox fan. Like, ah, it'll be fine. Xbox showcase would be oh. great. It wasn't fine. It wasn't fine it at was all. Not. Listen, it wasn't fine at Xbox all. Xbox puts up great shows. So they and in that era, I think I still think Xbox you know did good shows that's a pre game pass era and that's a very different xbox very different. but i think they were good shows nintendo brought good directs but the crazy fucking hype announcements were all were all all of it all of them were playstation yep kojima god of war everything everything that you can imagine was all playstation no one was losing their mind like god of war when rides of the tomb raider were shown like like it was just it it just wasn't happening when recore was being shown people weren't like oh my god like yeah so (laughs) we got recore (laughs) in the world that we live in now um there's not a lot of space for e3 and the fact that the production company that's doing PAX is doing E3 makes me think that maybe they, they understand that and they're trying to scope down a little bit. But in the in the post-COVID world and with Summer Game Fest and, and, and everything that that entails and, you know, most, most you know, big publishers realizing that they can do their own showcase and it's going to draw as much attention as it would to have to pay a lot of money to go to an E3 showcase. It, uh, I'm concerned for E3. I think they. I, I thought they were dead. I still think they're gonna and die. I, think, uh, yeah. it, I think this is not gonna be great. Uh, sure, it could be like a PAX LA edition, I guess, but it, it, just let it die. It, E3. Oh no! It, oh no! I love it, dude. I E3 2016 <laughs> was a fantastic experience. Yeah. I got to meet so many people that I that I've admired and I've made connections with ever since. And I understand all that, but this is a post COVID world. Uh, those, those giant events where you cram thousands of people in one convention center is just, it, it it's not, it's not where it's at right now. Just, I, I don't think E3 is long for the world. Unfortunately. So, so I want to, I want to expound on this a little bit. Cause I love talking about this. I don't know. I don't know why, but I do. So E3, right. Used to be the biggest thing ever. Seems like, Keely has taken over, or at least has tried to take over. He kind of wants to be the guy with the strings, right? He kind of wants to be the puppeteer right. with, with everybody. So he kind of wants everyone to fall in line. Sounds dramatic, but that's kind of what I mean. You know, he wants everyone to kind of come to him and like, all right, we'll set up everything. But can can Eth- will Ether even have the the presence now? Because we now have, if this is E3, like as we know it, and it comes back as we know E3 in the past. Will it still have this pull that people need to go to? Because there is like that, that thing where people are that you know there's Day of the Devs, there's uh, uh, Devolver Digital doing their weird thing every year. Now they have Jeff Keighley, where now he's had three years to work up connections with people, and now he has probably a lot more pull than he did previously when E3 was going. So like, I'm curious if they even will they even be E3 when they come back? Will they be the place you go to see everything? Um, will it still have the you know, E3 press conference that we all loved to to watch. Probably not, because like you said, you know, PlayStation's not going to be there. So, you know, PlayStation yeah, does their own thing now. Their PR is like, now nah, we can pull everyone to us. We don't care about going anywhere else. Yeah, absolutely. And l- listen, PlayStation was the, the winner, quote unquote, of last gen. Yep. And this generation's a little bit different because it, it certainly seems like it's more subscription-based versus straight console sales and all that. But PlayStation is still a juggernaut in, in the industry. It's still, it's it's probably the best uh, publisher of single player, you know, games, single player focused games. And now they're trying to have this giant push for well, multiplayer games. So you can't be the one stop shop when you know half of the industry isn't there. It's just you yeah, just can't. You can't. And also, the LA Convention Center ain't fucking small. <laughs> so like, how are you gonna fill that up, bro? So what again? That's another thing. We're just gonna have to. We'll see in twenty twenty three. Read pop. They ain't no slouches over there. They know what they're doing. I I believe they got something cooking. We'll just have to see if it's if it's worth it. Read. As if PlayStation was waiting to hit enter uh, last week's podcast, we were not able to cover a PlayStation indie event that just kind of happened, and they just tweeted out a bunch of stuff. Well, let's uh quickly go over it. Sea of Stars was confirmed for PS four and PS five. Swim. Announced for PS4 and PS5. Cult of the Lamb comes out August 11th on PS4 and PS5. Singleus 
announced for PS4, launching October 7th. The Tomorrow Children, Phoenix Edition, I heard this is good. Launches September 6th on PS4, PS5. Curse the Golf, I'm very excited for this game. Launches August 18th, PS4, PS5. And then what I've wanted, and I did not expect, Inscription is headed to PS4 and PS5 sometime, I believe, next year. Inscription, a big game that I wanted to uh, play on PC. Now I can just play on the PlayStation when it comes out. I'm very excited about that. Uh, I almost want to quickly uh, talk about, first off, was anything exciting for you for this? But second, what was th- what was this? They just kind of came out and were like, we're going to tweet about some indie games. Yeah. Here they are. I think it's All right, like, bye. Like, it was kind of weird. It's like that. It's the second or third time they do that. Uh, and, and honestly, I, I don't understand why this can't be a state of play. Um, yeah. Like yeah. Just an indie-focused state of play. Even Nintendo has their Nindies event, and those are great, and those are awesome, and it's a good showcase of, of indie games. and. I don't know. It just seems like it would fit as a, a indie state of play much better. Like if you, if they came out and said, "Hey, there's going to be a indie focused state of play coming out tomorrow," and these were the games, I think people would have been fine with it. I think. And I, I'm it, it sure there's some people. Time. I'm sure there's some people that's like, "Oh, you know, expectations." But like, if you literally say, "We have an indie showcase next," like immediately your expectations yeah. are it's set. It's like the Nintendo, the, so. the Nindies event. Nobody expects Mario Kart Nine to come out there because mm-hmm. Nintendo tells you it's a, it's a, the Nindies. It's a Nindies, and, yeah. You're not gonna those get are fun. Those, too, are, right? those are awesome. Yeah, so that was very confusing. I was like, this, why wasn't this, I don't know, why wasn't this bigger? It seems like, I don't know, it kind of seems like, here, damn. Like, you know, like, uh, take, take it, jeez. Like, stop bothering us. It, so I, I did feel a, a bit strange. I, I hope PlayStation kind of, they've kind of been treating indies as uh, kind of second class. I wish they would give them a little more pomp and circumstance a little bit more, especially when they have seemingly deals like these are deals that they have with these these people like you know you can put a video together <laughs> you, know, you don't have to be just tweeting these out you got time you got money right you're not low on money so i just wish they did a little more um but aside from that it was really cool i got really excited by seeing these games but it would have been cooler to see some sort of video or just something a little more pizzazz date updates this is where of course we go over all the new dates for the week Psychonauts 2 is getting a physical release September 27th. Robocop Rogue City is coming June 23rd. Steam PS5. Bayonetta 3! He's screaming again. You heard that. He's screaming again. Emmett, out there. I'm surprised he made it through this. I watched that video. I was like, this is his shit. Oh my god. <laughs> He's gonna lose it. Uh, very excited for this game, though. I love David May Cry. Love the franchise. I have not played the Bayonetta games. Don't tell him. But I want to try them out. And Bayonetta 3, I feel like I should at least jump into 1 and see if I can get through it. And if I can, go to 2, and then I'm ready for 3 when it comes out in October. But I will be trying that out. And of course, we go over Game Pass and PlayStation Extra and Premiums. This week is uh, Extra and Premium games that are coming to the game catalog. So let's see. You of course, getting Stray for PS4 and PS5. That is crazy. I was very excited to see that coming to Extra and Premium. You're getting Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrated coming to uh, uh, PS5 for, let's see, is, yeah, game catalog for PS4 owners as well. Um, but, of course, Seven Remake is available for PS4 people, and then Integrated is for PS5 people. Marvel's Avengers for PS4 and PS5 is also coming to Extra Premium, and also July 19th, a bunch of games are coming. So, here we go. PS4. The uh these first few are PS4 games. Assassin's Creed Unity, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, Assassin's Creed Rogue Remastered, Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry, Assassin's Creed the Ezio Collection, Saints Row 4 Re-Reelected, Saints Row Got Out of Hell. Those are all the PS4 games. Nope, there's one more. Ice Age, oh, what? Scrats Nutty Adventure, Jumanji the video <laughs> game, Paw Patrol on the Roll, Ready Set Heroes, and then for PS5 Spirit of the North Enhanced Edition. The cl- classics catalog for PlayStation Plus premium members are No Heroes Allowed, for uh, which was a PSP game, and Loco Roco Midnight Carnival PSP game. Anything stand out for you there? Uh, it's awesome. The Stray is day one. I so had awesome. forgotten that, and I was I was like prepared to buy Stray on PC, and then I was like, oh yeah, day one on on PS Extra, awesome. I think it's a it's a decent first upgrade um, of the games that I'm interested in here. Um, Assassin's Creed Unity in particular, it's like. One of the only of the uh, OG, the OG old school style Assassin's Creed games that I never played. And Syndicate is what I think is the best Assassin's Creed game. So I'm I, I'm going to download Unity and probably probably give it a go because it's always a game I've been interested in. I think it looks super pretty and the fan setting is awesome. And, you know, I'll, I'll give it a go. I think it's awesome. If you haven't played Final Fantasy VII, 
play that game. It's it's included. It's it's awesome. It's, it's so good. good. I'm loving. I, I now that we're in a world where Game Pass is a thing, and now PlayStation Plus, the new, it's 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 dropping. I love these. I, I love just being like, okay, this is a new game that I'm gonna download, and I don't have to pay any extra money for. Dope. Yeah, this is fun. Um, did you play? You played Assassin's Creed Four Black Black. Yeah, love Black. Flag. I love Black Flag. Yeah, everyone go try that one out. That's my f- uh. Mm, my, maybe my second favorite, maybe my third, I don't know, but I, I love Black Flag. That's one of my favorites. So check that out. And number I, three, number so, three for me. Number three, I, I, I respect it. It's, it's a great game. There's just so many good ones. Uh, Stray. I mean, you have to play Stray. At least try it. That looks really fun. I will be playing that the moment I can. Uh, and last but not least, Kirby's Dream Buffet was announced and it's coming summer to Switch. Cool. Now, that Did is. You fall, guys. Yes. Oh, that's right. Um, oh, and uh, Fall Guys is doing um, <laughs> uh, WWE people, I think, soon. Oh, that's great. I think I saw that. That was, that was hilarious. Uh, but uh, that is the news for the week. Now, I love to end the show just like I began it with a single question to Mario Not Bros. And that is, what is queued up for the week? Now, of course, this could be a game, some sort of movie, a TV show, a podcast that you didn't even listen to, a comic, a book, anything of the nature. This isn't only for Mario Not Bros. This is, of course, for you at home. Comment below. What do you have queued up for the week? Mario Not Bros. What is queued? I am planning on beating Escape Academy uh, on Twitch.tv slash Mario Not Bros for sure. Um, and then after that, I'm trying to slowly uh, get back into another FromSoft game. Uh, I've So far in my FromSoft journey, I've been Bloodborne, I beat Demon Souls Remake, and I beat Dark Souls. So I'm going to be jumping into Dark Souls 2 probably very soon. I will say, be prepared for a not as great. Not as great. I'm aware. I, know, I know you know. I'm aware. I, I was going to sure skip everyone has told it. you. But I was going to skip it, but I still want to give it a go. I Give it a try. If, if it's starting to hurt, you know, you can always turn it off, but but it is it is it's worth the revisit. It, it it's just it's compared to the greatness, so it's it seems terrible by, but it's not you know it's not a bad game, but it just when you compare it to everything else, you're like wow, this was this like this is not even close. This is crazy, but um, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited, dude. I I I love that you're doing this. I I cannot wait. When as soon as I saw your um. I don't remember the app, but the uh, games that you've the beaten. The GG app. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Shout out to yes, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So the little list thing you could do. As soon as I saw their games that you've beaten in 2022, I saw Bloodborne on there. I was like, we're going to have a good conversation. Because Bloodborne. I, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, I crossed 30 games beaten so far in the year. 30. That's, that's a wow. good accomplishment for me. That's Jesus. Yeah, that's very, that's very one of those 30 being Horizon Forbidden West, where I put 75 hours into it. So I feel great about myself. You're over a game a week. Almost. Almost. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think so. Oh. Good job, dude. My God, that the the, the, the commitment. I, I love it. Uh, Very impressive. I, I but yeah, as soon as I saw Bloodborne, I, I was like, nice, nice. I, I don't think I'm anywhere close to that. I was this has been like backlog season where I've just been slowly beating like Oh, you know, Cyberpunk, I never played that. Oh, I never played the Assassin's Creed Odyssey DLCs. So I went back and beat all of those, and then I did the Valhalla ones. And so, like, that's been, like, my past two, three months. It's just been, what did I miss? Oh, Cuphead. Let me go back to Cuphead and so I can play Delicious Last Course. I'm almost done with Cuphead right now. So it's just, all. it's been all that. It's been, what is, oh, that's right. Yeah, you see an achievement or something that you're like, oh, wait, I never beat this. Go back and Good polish time, it dude. off. Yeah, it's been great. It's been great. So that's that's really what I'm gonna be. I'm gonna keep with Cuphead. I'm going to probably. <sighs> I think that's it because I finished Stranger Things. That was great. Everyone watched Stranger Things. My God. Uh, finished the boys. Jesus Christ! Everyone watched the so boys. Good. Oh, so good. oh God! The ending. Ah! Please oh go watch God. it. A little weird ending, but it was still good. Um, yeah, I think that's all for me. I think I'm just gonna try Cuphead and just. You know, finally, it, it, it feels it, it's so strange. It's been so long since we had like a drought like this, really. I mean, I don't think we've had one really like this since what, 2016, maybe, or something like that. It's, it feels so long. Like, really, like since, since whatever, 
whenever Dragon Age Inquisition won Game of the Year, that it's been it's been the biggest. Twenty fourteen, yeah, twenty fourteen was yeah. was Dragon that, Age. That was a that was a slow year. That was like we that had two games to vote to vote between. It was like this or Overwatch. I guess we'll go Dragon Age. I don't know. That like, was a slow one. That was a that was a rough. I don't know. Oh God. That was uh yeah. I I never forget the eight years. Yeah, you just had no your worries. Xbox One and you're like, what do I do? <laughs> Second half, second half of the year is gonna have a few bangers. Oh, dude! I, everyone enjoy it because I really think next year, I don't think we're gonna have. We're I think we're gonna I'm, have to do the thing where we're gonna have to choose. Like, what are we? Yes. What are we gonna play? Because we can't play both of them. So, like, I, I think I think next year, just be prepared because I really think we're gonna get smacked in the face very quickly, very quickly. Mario not bros. Thank you so much for joining me this week, man. You pulled through for me. Thanks for I, having me, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, re- I really appreciate you coming through. I, uh, I had a great time. And uh, one more time, where can the people find you? I had a lovely time as well. Thank you for having me. You can find me at Mario Not Bros on Twitter, Instagram, just about anything. If you want to watch my streams where I play a lot of dumb games with a lot of fun people, a lot of fun friends, I just, that's twitch.tv slash Mario Not Bros. Everyone you follow them. Maybe it. put in the comment. Maybe put followed with a little question mark or something. And I'll, I'll you give you a it. like or something. But yeah, no, well, I'll be on the lookout. Are you partnered yet? Can we get the subscriptions in? Yeah, yes. I am. I'm affiliate. Oh, you can sub. You can donate. You can give do all them the a sub, and, everyone. And, like five I'll bucks take, right i'll take your i'll take your money he'll take, take her he'll take it he said it he'll take it not gonna say no dude thank you so much for joining me man this was fun uh, i know you gotta go so let's let you go remember achievers every single week we're gonna be a, it's a little flexible this couple weeks because of course alex is on paternity leave and join his baby time so we're aiming for wednesday thursday friday times really just keep it keep a lot to hear you'll see it when it goes live i'll tweet them out every week too as well so be on the lookout Remember, give him some love for joining us. I appreciate it. And remember, everyone, go Chief.